democracy is um, uh, uh, the problem of Nigeria's development. No, I, I, I wouldn't really think so because a people, a nation is only as great as the people that drive that nation. Democracy works when it suits our leaders. When it comes to issues about uh, funding, uh, security growth, the ecological fund, uh, blah, 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 blah. They have a, the, the leaders have expressed powers on explain teacher. The, our, our problem is development. The quality of the teachers that we have in the school, the quality of infrastructure, the quality of things we need to do. So it's a problem. Make them do better. If you can do better, it could be for us, be for your everybody. Welcome. This is Petito's Gang. Now today, a very special episode for a variety of reasons because, hey, I'm sitting here for the first time in more than eight years uh, as host. The subject, very important one, democracy. The AU has just issued a directive, actually, to the people of Burkina Faso get civilians in place within two weeks. Now sounding like FIFA asking the Football Federation of Countries to uh, change their leadership in a particular orderly manner or the other. That sounds fine, except are African leaders really Democrats? What we have in Africa in many places, are they really democracies? Are they better than military rule? Well, there are different perspectives on this matter and they will be canvassed today. We'll listen to the voice of the people from the streets, and we'll hear the gang. Welcome. This is Petito's Gang. Part of the problems of democracy is that uh, it's about leadership. I tell you, say it very, very bluntly. The problem with Nigeria is leadership. Now, democracy is it having, like, just the acting about the constitutional conference. The Senate is elected. Who elected the Consular Conference members? They are partly selected in a democracy and they are supposed to be representative. Now, do you have a selective appointment for a representative assembly? Make them do better. If you can do better, it could be for us, be for your everybody. Try to encourage and pick your people to go up with instruments, with Economies meant. A nation is only as great as the people that drive that nation. We really have at the core of Nigeria's challenge a cultural issue. So regardless of what kind of system we decide to use, if the people um, have a sense of progress, the people have a right culture and, um, uh, and, uh, and a sense of commitment in, 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 driving, in driving the nation forward, regardless of what system we use, whether it is democracy or any other kind of system, I, I believe that uh, we will be able to push Nigeria to the desired, to the desired end and reach our objective. But I don't think uh, democracy is an issue. Of course, fundamentally, development, if you, if you look at development as, as a world, it's not just about, it's about development of our people, what's our youth. I mean, have we, have we, we are too partisan here. We are too political inclined here. What I think is that if, the, if you develop the quality, the quality, look at, the, let, let me give you a scenario. The, the law school, people went to law school the other day. See, out, out of the, the 6,000 people that went to law school, 4,000 uh, lost, uh, failed the exams. Is that the kind of future? Is that the kind of development we are building? So I think, I don't want, I think the, our, our problem is development. And we are back. This is Petito's Gang. A bit of a surprise. Uh, this is my first time on this chair, the host chair for Petito's Gang since 2006. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Austin and Eugene, who are the regular co-hosts, have given me this privilege of opening uh, a new series of Petito's Gang. As you can see, it's a new set and all of that. Uh, we do hope a new vibrance and a new sense for this marketplace of ideas. And I've got with me on this gang today, you know, from my left, I've got TC, uh, UD, and Bekeme, and Yotumba himself. So, the subject is democracy. Now, the African Union just recently ordered uh, Burkina Faso 
to ensure that there was a civilian government in place following the ouster of purported resignation of uh, Blitz Kampauri. And, um, you know, the mixed feelings about this. The bottom line for many Africans is that it's a cop-out. African civilian leaders who are acting worse than military leaders are trying to protect their turf that democracy is not their motivation. And it'd be good for the gang to look at it in the light of the kind of democracy we have in Nigeria, in the light of 2015 elections that are coming, can Africa continue to tolerate this kind of democracy where, for example, in Nigeria, governors make a mess of the democratic process. They put, they have to sell their children, there's students and all kinds of people, and democracy isn't working for the Nigerian people. Should we tolerate this kind of democracy? So, what do we think? I would say that uh, we have gone through two types of democracy. There was democracy in the times of uh, Tafa Balewa, Awolowo, and uh, uh, Dr. Zikwe, where people canvassed opinions, projects, and ideas. And, and the, the uh, campaign uh, grounds were full of where you learn a lot of big English, a lot of knowledge, and what people would do for you. And that was what to determine which party you would vote for. But now it's a different ball game. It's that corruption, poverty, and uh, ignorance that dominates our democracy these days. In fact, uh, following from uh, uh, Otumba's uh, uh, issue, I now say that um, it should actually be tagged democracy yes. and not democracy. Yes. Because um, corruption and poverty especially, people are hungry. There is no person that will come out in the name of uh, politics or saying anything without having people following him. They're not following him because they like him or what he's going to say or what he's going to do. They are out there for what they are going to benefit. And you find out that most of these people that come out when there's an election or uh, 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 a discussion or for whatever uh, uh, purpose, they are coming out there to see if they are going to benefit from instant, that outing. Instant gratification. You know, and you find out that most of these crowds are rented. And when they are rented, it does not give you the true picture of what people think or how the people feel. They are going there because they are hungry. It is a case of any person who pays the highest and they will follow. And so it is uh, a situation where, if you call it democracy, it is, uh, it is an abnormality. Uh, I think I agree with Otumba. And that is that uh, prior to the military rule, there was democracy in its infancy as it were. But it was the military that institutionalized the impunity and corruption and whatever you call it. I believe that if the military did not intervene in 1966, our democracy would have grown and would have been better than what it is today. You will find that most of the people in politics today grew up during the military era. And what they understand is orders is orders. You know, in those days, you don't see a situation where when a government feels offended, they go and lock up somebody's residence or his shop or office. It happens now because our current rulers have been by the usual word rulers. <laughs> Not leaders. 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 <laughs> they are rulers. <laughs> they, are rulers. <laughs> they, are rulers. <laughs> they have imbibed impunity. You know, they they uh, uh, but democracy and the democratic processes have gone underground as it were. So I believe that whatever it is, we should allow democracy to grow. And the way to do it is by allowing our leaders, whatever, whatever you call them, whether they are worse than the military, but we allow them because it will take a while for democracy to grow. The point is that we have taken the first step and we should continue growing democratically. But, but is it practical to expect that these people who show no care for the Nigerian people, let's, let me use Nigeria as an example, they really show no care, it's about themselves. Leadership is other-centered behavior. You look at our political class, it's about me, myself, and I. If we allow this process to continue, won't we get to a point where we are just slaves in our country to these people because they've cornered power and continue to abuse power to fester their own interests? against the interest of the Nigerian people. Yeah, because, I mean, when you talk about these people, I wonder, and the question that I always ask is, who is government? Who are politicians? They're us. 
-hmm. you know, there are brothers, there are fathers, they are Nigerians, and so obviously there's a problem of values. And then, you know, to go back to what you said about, you know, the military rule, I think people don't realize that you can now speak up for what you think is wrong. So you have a lot of people, especially, I'll speak for my generation, you have a lot of people going behind uh, their phones and tweeting and, you know, complaining and not really doing much. You know, there are opportunities to engage and people don't take advantage of those opportunities. Now, if we are the people and we're saying we want democracy, what are we doing to get it? You know, I have, I mean, in my, I, I, as I tell my children, I'm 30 something so that they don't realize my actual age because they will announce it to the next person. But, you know, I have never voted in this country because I know it doesn't work. Do you understand? So what, I and mean, then as a person, I've decided, okay, there are certain causes that I'll pursue to ensure that things go the way that they should go. But then you try to get the younger generation to do something about it, and nobody really turns up. People, um, you have Ozumbamba Diwe and the rest of them were in university when they were agitating for our country. Now, what tends to happen is that you have, you know, knowledgeable older people like you, and probably your set who have ruled since they were my age, continuing to remain, and then, you know, you have concerned individuals like you thinking, I mean, you can't actually go out on the streets to agitate for as long as my generation can, but what are we doing about it? What are we doing to ensure that we have the sort of democracy that we want? So that is something that needs to be I think um, the military era changed the whole uh, perspectives by uh, well, literally left, literally right, and monetized. It, no, normally, when, when, when a, a group of radicals drive out some conservative government, or the, like the military, it is those radicals that take over power, and they are going to have a change. But in the case of Nigeria, the uh, military uh, made sure that those who take power were their friends and co-contractors, and these guys followed by monetizing the whole process. To the extent that this is no matter how many times you reform the electoral law, no matter how many jegas you put in, uh, in the INEC, you will never get a proper democracy in Nigeria because people are voting now on the basis of money, 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 and, and money. We have to take responsibility. Yes. Uh, those of us in civil society who fought the military, exactly. we have to take responsibility for failing to do the right thing in '98. Yes. Nigeria got it wrong in '99, yes. and we're down a bad street. Yes. I, I think the truth of the matter is that this will evolve over time. Like she said, she, during the military, you don't have the freedom to criticize government. Today, we, people abuse the president. But we yes. abuse the military. Some of us were on the streets. Yes. Yes. Under the military, we were yes. on the streets. Yes. It was restricted. It was restricted, it was restricted yes. The no, some, and says sometimes people are bound in the, in the prisons and they die yes. away there. Yes. Today there is more freedom. Yes, there That's is. what I'm, I'm I'm not saying there is absolute freedom, yes. but there yeah, is but more freedom today. The docility of the Nigerian populace is worrisome. Because we cannot wait forever. We have waited. The military left, you know, several years ago. The people that have taken over are even worse than the military. You mm -hmm. hear of the case of a governor coming to take a, a journalist from the hospital to his state because he wrote something against him. See? These are the things that happen now. And the Nigerian population, all of us are out there watching. When somebody comes and he says something, no matter who, we'll follow him and mm -hmm. shout. You know, if it is, we just can't, we can't continue okay, like we'll, this. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this subject, but let's take a break and refresh on this very challenging subject. We'll be right back. Petito's Gang, Nigeria's favorite television talk show, is back on local terrestrial TV. The 30-minute potpourri goes to the heart of the matter with its focus on the common good, making government accountable to the people, and deepening democracy. Your ultimate electronic village square talk show makes a big comeback with Eugene Ohu and Austin Nweze as co-pilots. Petito's Gang features credible voices from all sides of the political divide in a no-holds-barred discussion. Watch out for Petito's Gang, airing on STV, Monday night, midnight, October. Petito's Gang, more vibrant, more incisive, and more analytical than ever. And we are back. It's still Petito's Gang, and we're talking democracy in Africa. Um, you know, when we started out, I talked about Blaise Kampauri. It's very interesting, uh, the day that I met uh, Mr. Kampauri, it was in France, it was a meeting 
in ANSI um, was a Europe-Africa summit called by former French Prime Minister Barr, who was then mayor of Lyon. And he was my match. You know, we, we paired intellectuals, heads of state, and all of that. And, you know, we tried to have a conversation. Looked like a, the ultimate gentleman. And I, all I kept thinking as he was very nicely, politely chatting with me was, you killed Thomas Sankara. That's all I kept thinking. Uh, but he looked so genteel and all of that. I'm assuming. Now, that evening, interestingly, I went for a walk around the lake with two interesting gentlemen. One was the deputy managing director of IMF at the time, called Al Hassan Okwatara, who that evening suggested he was going to go back to run for president of Ivory Coast. And I thought to myself, Cote d'Ivoire is in trouble. And he got into trouble because he started. He's the current president of Cote d'Ivoire. Great guy, but that's the politics of Africa. And the other one was a, a consultant um, at McKinsey in Paris called Tijan Thiam who later became planning minister in, in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, and then we just reviewed Africa. And there was so much sadness. We were all so heavy for Africa that night as we talked about uh, the future. And, and, and I want to crown this night with what happened when I got back. And my wife recalls this. I got back uh, uh, and we were watching TV around midnight. And um, um, the, the, the um, leader of East Timor, was would he run for president? Uh, and he said, yesterday's heroes are yesterday's heroes. Our countries need new people who understand the new world to lead them. In Cairo, during the Arab Spring, the youth of Africa are upset at the kinds of leaders they have. But impunity continues, and the young people can get in their voices. So the young of, of the Arab world took it by their arms. Did he produce the results they wanted? Mm -hmm. How do we go from here for Africa? Well, what, what, what is happening in Nigeria now is also you know, a macrocosm of what happens in the entire African continent. When Sankara was there, I compared him with uh, Motella Mohammed. And nothing good lasts for long. They did not allow Sankara to perform. He was poor, but he was determined to liberate his country. In Nigeria, Motala Mohammed came to change a number of things, and he did not allow him. And because he touched on the core issues of corruption and others, they wanted to continue. And that's exactly what is happening and perpetuating in the entire African continent. The governors in, Af in, in Nigeria are doing the same thing. Anything that would change the status quo, they don't want it to happen. Even the younger ones that have taken over from the older generation are doing worse than what you think that the, the other ones are, uh, were doing. And so where do we go from here? Well, I because we do identify our interests with those that are leading us simply because we are benefiting. But at the end of the day, we are not benefiting. I tell you, when this man was murdered, a leg, a leg, um, what's his name? A leg, a leg, it was a leg bay or commodore. He was an, he was a member of the a leg bay. He was a member of the armed forces ruling council. Mm -hmm. He had a gun when somebody came and murdered him. But again, also, how many of us can carry guns? Can carry guns? Mm. If you create a good society, you will not be a victim of the things, the wrong things that happen in this country. You don't have to go with escorts if you have a good society. You walk around like a normal human being. And yes. for how long? Yes. It, 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 on the issue of um, the changes that took place, and um, Lake Mohammed, Mutala Mohammed, may God bless him and forgive his sins, I want to say that his regime was hijacked by wrong advisors, and the mass purge that he undertook of innocent civil servants. But he had good intention. It's you know, maybe good, but well. I mean, he, it must, we must identify that with him, created a core of civil servants that are no longer stable. And they then believe that, look, if you, anybody can sack you, know, anybody can retire at any moment, so you had better make a lot of money before you are sacked. And as long as the public service is corrupt, mm. every government will always be ineffective. Yeah. Okay, because, I, yes. yeah, I agree with you, sir. And yes. I'm, I say, I mean, there are very different theories for why Nigeria is the way it is today. 
everybody says, oh, in my time it wasn't like this. Some people blame the Biafran war and how it affected the Igbos. Some people have blamed the civil service, uh, you know, renovations and everything. But one thing that is clear is that there is an issue with our value systems in this country, from top to bottom, mm -hmm. from top to bottom. And this evidently needs to be addressed. If we had leaders with good values, mm -hmm. they would ensure that they left the country in, in, you know, in the direction of sustainable growth for the next person. Because what tends to happen is that you're selfish, there's poverty mentality, you're selfish, you want to be known for helping your people. Again, you know, that brings in the issue that we have of disunity, because as long as we keep on thinking in terms of our regions, we really can't fight for Nigeria as a nation. Now, if we don't address those things, then nothing evidently will change. So I think that for the new generation of people, um, we need to celebrate are, are positive leaders. The people that the younger people look up to are politicians, and politicians stole money, right? Or many of, I mean, that's what they're known for, yeah, right? We, we, so we, we had a time. To celebrate those that's people. That's very true. One of the reasons that uh, we created a center for values in leadership yes. is precisely to address these issues. Because I think there's a whole generation that does not understand what it means to lead. Exactly. Um, our leaders from the First Republic, who people look back nostalgically to, to most of them were successful professionals, but did not become rich people because they understood exactly. that leadership is about service, service. service. Yes. self-giving for the common good of all. Yes. Um, a doctor like Michael Lokmara finished without a house, yes. allocated the whole GRA in Enugu without giving himself one, one. plot. See? Why did we have that legacy? You have to teach people. People have to learn. That's why education is at the heart of this whole transformation yes. business. Yes. And history is failing us because we're not teaching history. Yes. Our young people don't know that people behave like this. But every, if you look through history, the greatest leaders were never truly rich people. No. You, you, you have to choose. Yes. Do you want to be a leader? Do you want, want to get rich? rich. Exactly. You want to get rich? Go and chase Aniko Dangote. Yes. You want to lead? Recognize that you will no, not no. necessarily be a rich man. You will not be go, uh, on the floor looking for what to eat, yes. but your bank account will always be thin, and then offer. And people have to use those kinds of criteria to judge people who are offering themselves. It seems now that anybody who has nothing else to do says he's a politician. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. think, I think part of our problem of the society is when the military decided to take over our schools. Okay. And so religion and moral teachings were divested. Right. from schools. And so morality went down. But there is need actually for to create awareness for a revolution because it affects everybody in the yeah. society. Even when uh, sometime during Babangida's rule, he said that it was better to hand over rulership or leadership to the younger generation. We discovered that the younger people are not better than exactly. the no, they are not. No. They are not. So yeah. There has to be a revolution mm -hmm. in society yes. to change the way we think and the way we value whatever it is. Yes. Okay, folks, there's so much to say about this very important subject. Unfortunately, we have to go. Time is not our best friend. But it's a subject we'll keep coming back to. So until we get to that next time when we come here, this is Patito's Gang. And we'll be right back. Okay, it's time to go. You had the people, you had the gang. What do you think? How do we make this really a democracy rather than them all crazy? Verdict is yours. The effort that's needed to make this a true civilization is yours. We remember, a civilization is civilians holding power accountable. That's the meaning of civilization. See you next week. Seems as if no one is in control.